Okay, here are the basic five phases. Phase one, simple primitive amalgams. Phase two, carved rectangular prism. Phase three, invented rock. Phase four is a simple geometric of your actual rock. And then putting these all together to create a more clear representational version of your rock. Um, a, a special change that you want to note is that instead of four images per, I want you to do three images per phase for a total of 15. Because this is 18 by 24, and you can see I've only done seven and I have eight more to put in. Um, so key things with this assignment is presentation. You want it to look neat. You want it to have some sort of compositional sensibility, which basically just means relating to each object to one another. You can do overlap, but it should be tasteful and interesting. Having scale shifts, having something large, something small, putting things on the plane shadows, not all the time, but some, but you know. Okay, where were we at? Yes, shadows. Do them. And also, um, line quality, very important. As always, uh, line quality that really emphasizes the, the spatial aspect of uh, your objects. Also being neat, not smudging, um, using your eraser. That's all part of the presentation. Um, okay, so up here, simple primitive amalgam. Uh, how do the shapes connect? Give them a two-point sensibility. Use line hierarchy. Simple light orientation, going in a direction, and um, then you know cast some shadows as well. So we really get a sense of uh, what's going on with them. And that way, use that illusional sense. Even if you're kind of faking it, try to do the best job you can in terms of um, you know what would the shadow be like. Uh, from the light direction and the, the shape that it is. Ooh. Ooh. Then even on the object, you can play with that as well. Which that that's that's in danger of obscuring there. That's what I did there. Okay, so also, oh, and then you can even do under objects. So this is an overhang, so there could be some sort of side shadow like that. Okay, so uh, this is just carving a cube. Do it in red pencil. It can be twisted or strange. Uh, and then carve it away with graphite. Uh, cast a shadow. I plotted the shadow casually using the light source and the light vanishing point. I'm triangulating from uh, different points. Uh, this is a the beginning of a uh, invented rock, and the key with this is to always know where the plane direction is, uh, where is it facing. It's the key with everything, actually. Uh, but when you use value, you want to you know be aware of where the plane stops and starts and um, just make that clear for the viewer. Yeah, this might be too complex, this one. Um, but, you know, again, I can, uh, I can create connective things through there. Just take some finessing. See how that using that line hierarchy helps to get it so it's not just a gray drawing, but you get some things to really come out at you. It makes all the difference. And then these can go back a little bit more. Anyway, you guys can do way better than this. I'm kind of rushing. Um, okay, so 
uh, in terms of this over here, it's a simple geometric of your realistic rock, um, of your actual rock. And so I reduced it to this red pencil shape, which is a triangular prism that is larger uh, at the top and smaller at the bottom, sort of a trapezoidal triangular prism. And then I just beveled it like this, sliced away this top part, um, and then I indent here, but not all the way up. It's kind of like an overhang. A wing comes out there, and then I have this plane facing here. So that echoes this. This is this indent going in like that. Uh, this is this plane facing this way uh, like that. Um, and that's what that is. So you want to make it really simple, reducible to its major components. With this, uh, yes, it is cross-hatching, but all the cross-hatching is not blindly done. It's very carefully considered and slowly arrived at uh, in, and determined, not just by the light source, but where the planes are moving, what's the direction that the planes are going in, and what is the... Um, uh, and how are the planes moving, that how, what's the surface moving like. So that is how I deal with it. Um, I think I could even change the direction of these planes right here, because I think this will more adequately serve what's going on if I do this. Yeah, that clearly illustrates the directionality of the plane in relationship to this kind of two-point perspective box form coming out, turning at this angle here. So that does a better job of that. I'm really reducing things to cubular rectangular forms a lot. Um, this, all of these that stair-stepping, this form, um, this, this, this. So you want to um, think in terms of that. Um, if you pop darks, be careful they don't just... They, if, they, if you have darks, make sure they really push the form. They don't just become darks unto themselves. This is dark here because I'm really emphasizing there's a turn here. Because there's also this vertical tangency that goes into like more of a horizontal shape here. It's all lining up. So I need a strong turn to let you know, yes, this is a change of direction here. Don't just believe this line here. Um, yeah, inside to outside contour, focus on that um, as well when forms overlap one another. Uh, and again, when you're doing this, you want to turn your head so you look at one side of the object and then look at the other side of the object. But you want to see around it. You want to see what's going on. Uh, when you do that, you start to see what the forms are doing. You don't get locked in into um, the flat photographic image. You want to scan and accentuate your binocular vision so you really sculpturally start seeing what's going on because that's what you're doing. You're sculpting form. You're not drawing flat shapes. All right.